Hi everyone, and thank you for watching my video. I have a beautiful day. It's it's cloudy, but it's still beautiful. Got the ocean. It always calms me and makes me feel wonderful. So in this video, you know, I was doing some some thinking and kind of doing some my own research. You know, I always kind of wonder what everything is, and you know, I realized that everyday life and just reality is the tip of the iceberg. You know, there's so much behind the scenes. Uh, there's, the rest of life is esoteric knowledge, it's, it's mysteries, it's, it's the unknown. We know nothing. <laughs> we feel we know everything, but we, we don't know anything. And I try to challenge myself as often as possible in finding out what uh, a lot of these mysteries are and understanding the, uh, all the stuff in the background, or as much as I can. And uh, one really uh, basic concept that I wanted to explore, and you, you see the title of the video, is what the Earth is. Like, what exactly are we on? I really feel that it's really important to, to know this stuff because, like, if, if you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I guess you can call me a conspiracy theorist or a person that's um, hard to convince, but um, once you... Once you clean away one lie, once you, you you break down a whole the whole the whole stage, the whole stage, the whole play, everything goes down with it. And then you can rebuild and, and truly know what everything is and what's going on. So I have faith in that I could hopefully um, uncover a lot of this the illusions that exist. So in this video, um, going to talk about the earth what what exactly the earth is and uh, how how the earth truly exists now he, the, the status quo is that we live on a hollow not hollow but we live that's later in the video we live on a on a solid sphere we, li we live on a globe and the globe you know the globe solid it's believed that we have a like a, a core like a super hot core and there's um, lava around the core and basically the whole thing is it's just a, a solid a solid sphere and the experts that put this in the academic books um, for you know for us to um, learn about in school even even they admit that a lot of what they say about that is speculation you know they have access to you know the technology and they can they can uh, you know explore it and use you know these fancy um, radar sonar whatever they use to to find out things and um, you know we we assume since they have more than we do they know more than we do that they're they're right and we just give them we, we leave our faith in them but they 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 admit that that a lot of what they say about what the earth is and what's inside of the earth is speculation and not that long ago like some hundreds of years ago the majority of the world ac accepted the fact accepted as fact that the earth was was flat and if you were on a boat and you were in the ocean you could sail over the edge you could sail over the edge of the earth and fall off that was accepted just some hundreds of, of years ago and then later eventually they realized or everyone came to a new conclusion that the earth is a globe and because we have uh, so much so much uh, advanced technology well uh, re adv advanced relative to what you know just just a short time ago like a uh, hundred years ago we didn't have the technology that we have now we assume that since we have it now there's there's that we don't we, we don't have to ask any questions anymore we, just, we can just um believe what's presented to us because we have the technology but i believe i believe i feel that we're only given or or allowed to know only a certain amount and i feel that uh the, the, the governments or elite elite uh, scientific groups or elite powers that be have to keep 
a lot of things secret from the rest of the, of the world. Yeah, I'm sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but um, if you're watching this video, you have an open mind, and um, I, I want you to come and think about this with an open mind, because this is uh, some, it's kind of some way out stuff. But a long, not a long time ago, um, the theories that they had were way out too, and. and a lot of stuff they it ended up being wrong. A lot of things that everyone thought was right ended up being completely wrong and ridiculous. So they thought. So I'm gonna talk about the hollow earth theory. And the reason why I've decided to focus on the hollow earth theory is because like once you start looking into the hollow earth theory, once you start looking into that theory you a lot of things make sense that don't make sense with the regular earth theory and uh once you once you see that a lot of things uh, make sense with that it makes you question like everything else what else is not true or what else is, doesn't make sense so with so with with the hollow earth theory it a lot of it started at least what's recorded a lot of it started in the 1800s there's a uh, quite a quite a few stories that uh that were written in the 1800s of uh people that uh reportedly or they say that they they explored or they they knew someone they found out some information about the hollow earth they somehow got to the hollow earth and they were able to talk about it, make stories about it, document it in great detail. And a lot of that stuff was written off as sci-fi or fantasy. But uh, the, the the most recent, but it was, it was a long time ago. But the most recent uh, situation that happened that um, brought this brought this brought this back to life again was in 1927. In 1927, there was a naval uh, officer, um, Rear Admiral Byrd, who he, with an airplane, he flew to the, he, 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 he took a mission to the North Pole. He wanted to be the first person to, to go to the, the North Pole. And uh, reportedly, reportedly on, on his way to the North Pole, he, he, he went there and he, what he found wasn't what he expected to find. Like the North Pole, we know that it's, well, they, it's, you can look up and it's easily, you can easily find that it's like, the, it's really, really cold. It's like negative 50 degrees. It can get as cold as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But the further he went up in latitude, uh, it, it got warmer, warmer it got. And uh, eventually, you know, he kept he kept going, he kept flying, and um, what he found there wasn't what he expected to find. It ended up being a, a like a paradise, like um, lush vegetation, um, animals that uh, like extinct animals, like um, woolly mammoths. Uh, it, it was full of life. It was very vibrant, full of life, huge trees just totally the unexpected and uh so that he wouldn't run out of gas reportedly he turned back around and he told he told the navy he let he let them know he wanted to let the world know what he discovered he was really excited about what he what he found but they felt that it was in their best interest to keep this quiet and just you know keep it behind the scenes so <laughs> that's the first part of the story. And um, let's like 20 years later, another story, another part of the story, 20 years later, uh, uh, Admiral Byrd, he, he led a mission on the South Pole this time, not the North Pole, but the South Pole this time. And uh, this time it was for, it was an effort, uh, it was a situation with um, World War II. World War II was uh, at the end and they went there to, 
search for some of the high ranking officials of Hitler's army. Because they, for some reason, they felt that uh, Hitler's, Hitler's army, the, uh, a lot of them fled and went to and had secret, secret, top secret bases in Antarctica. So they went there to, to try to, I guess, to search for them. And, you know, Antarctica is in, uh, uninhabitable, so they say, because it's ridiculously cold there. Only penguins live there. And uh, again, what they found was the uh, unexpected. They found another another area full of teeming, full of life. It wasn't freezing. It was totally habitable. Um, lots of life. But this time, the story goes, they were met with opposition. They were met by <laughs> UFOs. And keep in mind, UFO doesn't mean um, extraterrestrial. Uh, UFO just means unidentified flying flying object. And uh, supposedly they got into a firefight with the UFOs. And you know, the UFOs, of course, won because they're um, you, if they're the UFOs that we think they are, they're more advanced. And the story, I'm not gonna keep, I'm not gonna finish the story, but uh, they, they. They ended up coming to some conclusion, not conclusions, but they end up um, coming to whatever understanding that they uh, came came up to, and the story kind of ends there. We don't know what where there's n nothing else really reported about what what happened af after that. Where if there is, I'm not aware of it yet. But a uh, a big question with all of this is like what happened between. Uh, 1927 and here this point 1947 it's a huge missing chunk wonder what was going on during all of that time okay so that's a little bit of background information about like the discovery and kind of the, the mystique behind the hollow earth so now I'm gonna talk about the hollow earth and describe the hollow, the hollow Earth, um, based on the, the models and, and theories that have popular models and accepted theories that have been put forth about the Hollow Earth. Now, the Hollow Earth, it goes that it's it's a sphere, it's a, a hollow sphere, and there's a hole at the north and the south pole, and the hole is approximately 600 miles in diameter each hole on both at the north and the south and the sphere the sphere is supposed to be around 600 miles thick and inside of the sphere is a sun so we have another sun it's not a it's not a, a, a hot core but there's there's a sun in in the hollow earth and the sun is supposed to be around 600 miles in diameter also. So the, the sphere of the hollow earth is about 10% of the whole, the, whole, the whole earth. The whole inside of the hollow earth is, they say, about 8,000, 8,000 miles of, of diameter of, of space inside of the hollow earth. And... Based on the theory, uh, you know, there's holes in the, in the north and the south pole, so the ether from space can go through the holes, and it exerts, it helps uh, exert gravity inside of the hollow earth, just like we have gravity on the the surface of the earth. And you know, how, you know how gravity works. <laughs> I'm still shaking on understanding how it works, and you know, science doesn't really know how gravity works, but. Uh, um, what they say is that uh, gravity works based on uh, the, the, the mass of something. It depends on the mass or the density of something. And the, the shell or the sphere of the earth is, is super, super, super dense, especially the deeper you go down, it's really dense. And this, this density creates the gravity. This is why the ocean doesn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't float away on the top of the earth and inside of the earth. Sun of the hollow earth creates the aurora borealis or the aurora 
Australis, Australis, the, the northern and southern lights. If you go to the north of the South Pole, there's there's uh there's lights shining shining or, or coming out of, of it. And these the sun pushes out the electromagnetic field here and it goes out of the hole and, and makes those lights. It also makes the Van Allen radiation belt that surrounds the earth. And the Van Allen radiation belt uh, protects the earth from our outer sun for, from excessive radiation. Really interesting about the hollow earth theory is with well, there's lots of uh, different um, phenomena that happen on Earth that support the hollow Earth theory. But um, one really interesting one is earthquakes. Uh, with earthquakes, uh, scientists have reported that when earthquakes happen on Earth, the Earth has been documented or, or shown or seen to, to, to ring like a bell for like an hour. And, you know, in order for something, for the earth to ring like a bell, it would have to be hollow. And also with, with the moon, um, there's, a, there's a, re a report of, uh, they went to the moon, they shot a rocket to the moon. They crashed a rocket to the moon. And after the rocket crashed on the moon, the moon also rang like a bell. But the moon rang like a bell for three hours. So not only is the earth, the earth may be hollow, but the moon may be hollow as well. And it probably has its own sun and even its own people, like they say the hollow earth ha has in it. Its own, its own people, its own animals, its own, own world. And also the, the other planets, other planets look to be hollow as well because they have similar southern and northern lights at the pole the, like we have the the Australis Borealis the, the northern and southern lights you know the names difficult but they have, they have northern and southern lights also if you check out and look at uh, look at videos video not videos but look at um, photographs maybe even videos too but uh, photographs of taken of the planets of our solar system so just some really interesting stuff in regards to you, you know other theories on what this is the, the earth and like once you go down this rabbit hole and start looking at all of these these details well at least in my case you begin to learn a lot of a lot of things. Well, I learned a lot of things that I didn't that I didn't know. Like a lot of uh, like fundamental things, I realized that I that I didn't know. Like when you start comparing the the hollow Earth model with with this Earth model. Like for example, understanding gravity and how how gravity works. This is that's a really really tough. And I thought I understood it, but I totally didn't. <laughs> So maybe in the future, um, depending on how this video goes or in depending on how much more I, I learn and how interesting I think it'll be, I want to talk about some of these details, these, these comparisons in, in great deep, further detail about the, the hollow earth. So maybe I'll do that in the future. So uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. I'll, I'll stop here. Um, apparently, if you've um, watched this far and you, you know you you, you you have an open mind, <laughs> and an open mind is good. So uh, stay awake and s stay aware. And I would love to know what you think, what's on your mind. Um, if I missed anything, um, or if there's something else for me to consider, um, you know, please share and, and let me know what you think. So. Uh, I love you all and thank you so much for watching my video. You have a wonderful time of the day wherever you are. I hope everything's going good for you. So y'all take care out there. I'm gone.